This is Information Service Engineering, lecture number five, Natural Language Processing, part four. Before I give you a brief introduction on what's up in this week of the lecture, let's recapitulate what we did last time. So last time we were talking about finite state automata. We know already finite state automata are an interesting mathematical model of a machine which is able to accept regular languages. And also we have previously learned about regular expressions by which we can implement nice search filters. So to make further use of exactly this concept of a machine, we introduced finite state transducers with a specific purpose in mind. Now with finite state transducers, we wanted to implement morphological parsing based on finite state transducers. And we were talking about how to implement that. Okay. Next in line then was tokenization. So we were talking about how to segment running text into sentences, into words. So sentence segmentation, word segmentation, we were talking about not only for English, but also for more complicated languages, which don't have, let's say, a space as word separator, for example. And then we were talking about language models, especially statistical or stochastic language models. So we said language, can be analyzed and modeled simply based on principles of statistics because you know the environment of a word often determines what is the subsequent or previous word so based on a model like that we wanted to find out how it is possible to predict that now after a specific sequence of words another word might follow and we learned also that we don't have to take into account the entire history let's say one complete sentence, but we can approximate these kind of probabilities with the help of n-grams. This was the Markov assumption, which says, okay, we only have to look at some of the preceding words to determine what's the next likely word to appear. And besides the Markov assumption, we determined n-grams there, of course, n-grams have sequence of tokens. And uh, to estimate then or approximate these probabilities that are involved there, because there we were making use of the Bayes theorem and conditional probability. So the probability of a sequence was the probability that a specific word occurs under the assumption that the rest of the sequence already has occurred. And this is of course a, uh, a conditional probability, which can be modeled with the help of Bayes theorem and applying the chain rule. And of course, then we were asking ourselves, how do we really then determine these probabilities? And there, we had the solution, okay, we could make use of huge already existing text corpora to see how language really is used and simply count the words, the engrams there, and by that find out about their relative frequency. And by that, we, with the help of the maximum likelihood estimation, we were able to calculate the probability. So what we are going next? Next, what we are going to do is of course, in our corpus, not all of the words might really occur. So what are we going to do with so-called unknown words that don't occur in our uh, corpus for which we don't have a probability? And moreover, just think about n-grams. Not all of the potentially possible n-grams all occur in our corpus. So therefore, to get sometimes probabilities for a test case, and to look for a specific occurrence of this bigram, trigram, or foregram in a corpus might lead to zero occurrences, then the probability is zero and your entire computation then does not work because it all boils down to zero. So we have to find a way how to estimate exactly the probabilities of these unknown words or unknown sequences of words. And this can be done by smoothing and we will introduce you in the very simple technique of Laplace smoothing here. Furthermore, of course, we want to go down into details and uh, we have prepared already again a collaborative notebook for you where you can try out exactly the examples from the lecture here by, uh, for example, here computing the probability of a specific utterance based on bigrams. Okay, next what we have to do, we have somehow to find out what's the quality 
of the language model that we have created. The quality more or less is determined by, you know, how likely is it that this language model really predicts the correct word that we are looking for. And for that, we will learn about two different kind of evaluations. We will look at so-called intrinsic evaluation, which is evaluating a language model in general, and the extrinsic uh, evaluation, which is based on a specific task for which we want to apply the language model. And then we need some measures to compare them. And for the intrinsic evaluation, we will learn about perplexity, as well as then for the extrinsic evaluation, we will talk about the word error rate as a standard measure for evaluation. Okay, with that, we are closing then the chapter on um, language models and engrams. And we proceed then with another NLP technique with part of speech tagging. First of all, we make clear what is part of speech, what part of speech is are there so you will learn that part of speech is nothing else than a specific category or type of a word which means in a part of speech class specific words are collected which have similar properties so like for example nouns verbs adjectives and so on and we will learn about so-called closed and open word classes which means word classes which are more or less complete and other word classes where you can always you know, have to take into account that there might be new words because new words are created. Like, for example, new nouns come up with, let's say, new technology. Then we will learn about all the possible POS texts that are there and about specific text sets that have been devised. And in the next section of part of speech tagging, then you will see that, of course, not every word is only bound to one specific POS tag, which means we have again to deal with ambiguity there because there are words which belong to different word classes. So they can be a verb, they can be a noun, they can be an adjective and so on. And it's the same word. However, there is then a difference in meaning. And to find out what's the meaning of that word, you have to determine which is the correct POS tag in a specific sequence. So we will learn what is it that exactly determines the POS tag of a word. For that, we will see first a rather basic vanilla approach, which is already doing rather well. So it, it achieves so almost 90% accuracy. So if you do that vanilla approach, however, we will then show you some more sophisticated methods based again, of course, on st uh, statistical language modeling. And one of them will be the hidden Markov model. And with a hidden Markov model, you will see that you take two really important factors into account, which is the word itself and of course all of the potential POS tags that are assigned or assignable to a word, so all the candidates. And on the other hand, you will see that of course a tag can be determined by a sequence of tags. Like for example, after a determiner, it's rather likely that after that a noun follows or an adjective and a noun. So these two different kind of probabilities will be taken into account and you learn more than about the hidden Markov model in part of speech tagging too. Last but not least, what you will learn are so-called word embeddings. Word embeddings are a rather popular technique right now because what they are doing is to try with the help of word embeddings to map the semantic meaning of a word into a high dimensional vector space by keeping semantic probabilities, which means similar words in that vector space are close to each other, while words that have completely different meaning are much farther apart. And this goes even so far that we are possible, or it is possible, you will see that, that you can do vector arithmetics with these vectors of words to come up with interesting new analogies. So you can do analogies based on vector arithmetics. So this will then be word embeddings. However, this is only the first part of word embeddings and embeddings in general that you will learn of. We will continue this section then later on in the fourth chapter of the lecture when we are talking about machine learning. Okay, so these are this week's subjects. Lean back, enjoy, watch it, and I hope you have fun.